I'm on a quest to find the right balance between lightweight and durability when it comes to freestyle quads. The owner of Sky Ready RC reached out to me and said, do you want to review our frames? And I said, but then, probably not, because I'm going to be honest with you. Frames don't impress me much. A lot of frames are just like, okay, you got a plate, you got a plate, you got some standoffs. Oh, look, you made a frame. Uh, but Sky Ready RC has done something really interesting with their frames. And I want to take a closer look at it. And I want to show you a closer look at it. And I want to just show you these beautiful quadcopters that Sky Ready RC builds. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn that that was the longest intro ever. I want to start this video by looking at the Cobra frame from SkyReady RC. This is a complete build that SkyReady RC sent me. I also have just a bare frame that I'm going to assemble for you so you can see what makes it unique. If we take a look, we can see, I mean, it looks like a pretty standard build in a lot of ways. We've got a 20 millimeter frame. We've got a 3D printed canopy. A lot of race frames are going this direction. Instead of having a carbon fiber top plate, they'll have a 3D printed top plate. I first saw it on the, probably the Floss, the Hyperlite Floss. A lot of those guys were going, maybe that's just because that's such a popular frame, that's the first place where I saw it. Um, but what makes this really unique, check this out. What the heck is going on here? Let's take a closer look. The frame comes with these two aluminum pieces. And the, let me see if I can figure out exactly how this goes. The arms fit in like so. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty tight. Oh, wow. That's really tight. That's some fine machining there. Oh, yeah. It fits in. Just like that. And you can already start to see what's going on here. There's barely any slop. But there is, there is a little bit of wiggle there. I mean, you can see I could just wrench that off. But hold on. Then the bottom plate comes down like so. And sandwiches. And check this out. Look how that goes together. That is really freaking slick. I'm gonna put some screws up through here, just like normal. So what Sky Ready RC has done here is they have taken, this, this concept has been executed before. There are lots of other frames out there with some kind of like captive slot design, but they're all doing it with carbon fiber. And there are frames out there that have metal braces, but a lot of the time the metal ends up, you just get so much metal, the weight of the frame goes really high. SkyReady RC seems to have struck a really interesting balance by adding just a little bit of metal right at the part where the stress is gonna be the highest. They may, they may have gotten sort of best of both worlds. Let's finish putting this frame together and see how it goes together. I will also notice that the carbon uh, weave does seem to be aligned the way that most people would prefer it to be aligned. Most people criticize the weave if it is not straight up and down the arm, if it's cut diagonally for some reason. It, it's really not true though. You, this is just a cosmetic surface layer on most carbon sheet that you get. The internal structure of the, of the carbon fibers, you actually can't really tell from just looking at the direction of the weave, um, just the surface. But some people are going to be happy to see that this is going the direction that they would expect. So that's actually a threaded piece and it's just like tapped to the right dimension. And that's going to go up through the bottom. Oof, that is tight. That is tight. So I sort of have a love-hate opinion of this situation. The upside is that this nice aluminum plate is going to act as the nut, and this is going to tighten down really snugly and really securely. The downside is that we will have to... How are we going to get our standoff tight? Normally, you tighten the standoff down by tightening the standoff nut, but in this case, the standoff is not going to... Yeah, this is going to cinch down, and unless... I were to strip out the screw somehow. The only way to get the standoff tight is just to kind of grab it and twist it down. You can't really cinch it down this way, which is, I think, a little bit of a shame. Maybe just back it off a tiny bit. That might work. So let's back it off a tiny bit. 
put some pressure on the standoff and then just see if we can I guess that's going to be okay but so here's the final assembly of the Cobra race frame and by the way the, there's a carbon fiber plate version of it as well as the 3D printed canopy version that I showed you earlier the total weight let's see here wow I was about to say, I mean, this is this is not as light as some of the absolute lightest racing frames, and that's true. If you look at, like, the 533 Switchback or the Lumineer Chief frame, they come... How much lighter are they, really? Hang on. Okay, so those guys are coming in at closer to, like, 60 grams, which is... Okay, that's 20 grams. That's not nothing. But you get a lot more livability out of this. Easier to build. You can fit a 30 millimeter stack in here if you prefer. There's enough height. You could, you could even probably get a Cadex Vista in here if you really wanted to squeeze it. So, 80 grams, not 60 grams, but a pretty livable frame. Just for perspective, the fully built one comes in at 308 grams. So add a battery, let's say you've got another 180 grams, 480 grams of battery. You're not gonna put a GoPro on there. You're at sub 500 grams for a racing quad. I think that's pretty freaking respectable. Now we've been looking at the Cobra, the racing frame from Skyride ERC, but they also have a freestyle frame. This is the BOA. Like a boa constrictor. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, it's like a cobra and a boa constrictor. Okay, this is the boa. And like you would expect from a freestyle frame, it's a little bit bigger, it's a little bit heavier. And how heavy is it? The frame itself comes in at around 120 grams dry. That is, like, the heaviest freestyle frames out there come in around 140, 145 grams. Okay, the Bandolero Vortex's frame may be even heavier than that, but I feel like 140 is heavy, 120 is like still a freestyle frame, but uh, not super heavy. And then any freestyle frame getting down around 100 grams, like the Kebab FPV's Glide, um, that's getting pretty light for a freestyle frame. This guy fully built comes in at 390, so let's say 400 grams for the quad, 500, 600 with a battery-ish, and then another 140 for the GoPro. We're at 740 grams all up, and that's not light, but my rule of thumb is for a freestyle quad, between 600, 650 grams as flown, whether that's with a GoPro or without, but most of the time that's going to be with a GoPro. Between 600, 650 grams is pretty light. Between 650 and 700 is not bad. Between 700 and 750 is eh, okay. And over about 750 is... Ugh. So we're getting up to the edge of ugh, depending on what GoPro we put on here and what battery we put on here, but still not in the ultra heavy... Ugh flies like a pig range. How does it fly? We're going to see in just a second. Now the BOA uses the same aluminum plate technology that the Cobra did, although the front plate is a little different because you can see here it doesn't uh, go through the plate like it does in the front. It's a little separate. And they have done this interesting technique. I cannot remember the frame which was the first frame where I saw this. Like I know that the Apex does something similar to this where you've got the back plate, or the the back half of the bottom plate, doesn't extend all the way to the front. Do you see that it stops right here at these front screws? And then the bottom half, or the front half, goes across the bottom. So you've got this kind of tiered design. The Apex does something similar. What that means is that you have a ton more space up front and not as much space in the back. Unless there's a engineering reason why it's necessary to do it this way, it might be nice to flip that around. Like, I don't think you're going to be able to do that. I don't think the plates would let you. But it might be nice to flip that around. I think most people would prefer to have more room in the rear so they have more room to get their video transmitter. If you're putting a DJI Air unit or a Cadex Vista, it'll give it a little more room. Whereas up front, you basically just got the camera and that's it. Having the taller standoffs in the front also means that there is more leverage against the front in a front impact. It seems to me like having the front be slammed and the back be tall, I don't know. I mean, when you crash, you oftentimes cartwheel and both the front and the rear take a beating, but in a dead front impact, I'd rather have the front be shorter than the rear and the camera needs less space than all the stuff, the other stuff. So it's a small criticism there. Maybe there's a good reason why they did it the way they did it. I've just overlooked. 
Antenna mounting is one of my pet peeves. I famously, is it famous yet? I prefer to use zip ties off the arms that puts the antenna underneath the props so it's less likely to get chopped and having it on a zip tie means that it's kind of floppy and it can kind of get out of the way in a, in a, in a crash. I'm not a big fan of these antenna tubes because they break whereas the zip tie will bend. That being said, the way that SkyReady RC has done this it does appeal to me. They have placed the antennas in a similar location to how I usually like to do it. It's underneath the prop and it's, it's sort of off the arm. The other thing they've done is a lot of people would have just put this 3D printed antenna holder around the standoff and then it could have just wiggled and moved they actually, and I can't show this on camera very easily, there is a cross piece going all the way across the back, uh, the, the interior, connecting the two antenna pieces, the antenna holders, so that they can't change angle, and that's a really nice touch. Now these frames can be purchased with your choice of color in the 3D printed accessories. They shipped it to me, of course, in purple and gold, my favorite combination of colors, at least for quadcopters. Um, this TPU plate, uh, for the battery. It's nice because TPU is not super crushable and it's going to help keep these uh, screw heads from digging into your battery, but I am a huge proponent of gel battery pad and I, I like to use um, a grip. I think it's a little bit better than some of the generic stuff, but it's a fine distinction. A lot of people prefer to use the cheaper generic stuff. Um, this is essential to me, especially for a freestyle quadcopter where sometimes if you can't fly at home, you're not getting it back at all. Like in a race, if you crash and you eject your battery, okay, you're out of the heat and that sucks, but you will get your quad back. But when you're flying freestyle, there's some times when you just can't get to it if you go down. Um, so I do everything I can to avoid ejecting a battery. And I feel like two battery straps, yes, two battery straps are more than twice as strong as one. Than one. Let's talk about that for a second, little interlude. If you have a single battery strap, what's gonna happen in a crash is that the battery will try to cam out, it'll try to lever out, and that will pull and, and lever on the battery strap and, and sometimes break it. If you have two battery straps, then the battery cannot get the leverage to kind of cam out and tear the battery strap. So two battery straps are more than twice as strong as one, and that's why I love that they've included two battery straps here. It is a little unfortunate that we can't move them forwards or backwards. So like if our battery wasn't sized right. Now there's plenty of room on this top plate. There's, this is such a big top plate, so we probably have the flexibility. On some quads with a relatively um, small top plate, like you, you would jam the battery into the GoPro if you had to move it front or back. This is, it's okay. Like I think I'm gonna be able to get them around this typical 6S. Yeah, okay. So the spacing is acceptable at least for the batteries that I use. And you got plenty of room on there if you wanted to do longer distance stuff to get like an 1800 or like a big 1500 milliamp hour 6S on there. You got plenty of room up there. Now I have a very strong opinion about mounting the SMA pigtail for your video transmitter. I always prefer to use this style. This is like the TBS style, I guess they pioneered doing this, where you have these two screw holes and the screw holes screw in, as opposed to the kind where there's just like a single nut and a lock nut. Those kinds, in my experience, they always uh, come loose or rip out, whereas this kind is perfectly secure. It's just not going anywhere. However, one thing I do notice is that if you put this uh, brass piece on the outside, then you have to screw from the inside, and that's fine when you're assembling the quad on the bench, but if I had to do a repair, I couldn't get at these screws. So if I had built this, I would put this piece on the inside, I would put the screws in from the outside so the screw heads were accessible, and it's a small thing, but worth pointing out. And it's worth pointing out because SkyReady RC didn't just build these quads for me for the review, they actually sell ready to flies. So we're not just judging their skill as a 3D designer and a frame designer, but also as a builder, if you decide to go pick up one of these from them. The rest of the build is completely meticulous. Um, solder joints are basically all perfect. Um, just nothing to complain about. Looks like a really, really solid build. Even to the point where they added small M3 washers here to keep the screw heads from sticking out the top of the motor even a little bit. Check it out. Not sure how well you can see this, but the screw head is just barely, maybe like a quarter of a millimeter beneath the surface of the motor. So there's 
no chance that the screw heads are going to damage the motor windings or the motor wires. And that's a really nice little touch. Well, it's time to go out and fly the quads, and I'm going to give you some sample footage of how they fly. But I, I got to be honest with you, there's most frames are going to fly pretty well if they have a similar thrust to weight ratio. And the main difference in a frame's design is not how it flies, but how it crashes, how durable it is, and how easy it is to build and maintain. As far as buildability and maintainability, I feel like these frames more than pass the test. You can replace an arm with a single screw. They have the metal bracket to help keep the arms from getting wobbly, even though they're only held in by one screw. Uh, and as far as durability goes, I'm gonna fly them around my yard. I'm gonna show you some footage because it would be irresponsible to review a frame without showing some flight footage. But at the same time, just one flight around my yard or 10 flights around my yard isn't gonna tell the whole tale of durability. So that's gonna bring us to the end of the video. I'm gonna let you finish watching this flight and if you decide that this is a frame that you're interested in, you'd like to pick up, there's a link in the video description to SkyReady RC site. Um, whether you get their Cobra Racing frame, their BOA freestyle frame, or whether you decide to have them build a quadcopter for you. And they don't just build their own frames. In fact, when I looked at the website, they didn't seem to have a ready-to-fly build or bind-to-fly build of any of their own frames. It's all like TBS Source 2 and Schizo Nova and... Sky Ready, build you, you build, surely you build the, your own frames, right? You guys, if you want Sky Ready to build you one of these, just contact them and tell, okay, back to the fly. That's gonna do it for this video. Links in the video description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of these frames. Have you have you bought one? Have you had good experience with it? Have you had a bad experience with it? Thanks for watching. Happy flying. Do you see this baby? Isn't he cute? Hit the subscribe button. Join my Patreon. Use my affiliate links. Or just keep watching videos. That's better than nothing. Coco Kaka, subscribe to my daddy. <laughs>